everyone so i am back outside walking so i mentioned this in the start of the video but i kind of want to say like why we are the ones that are you know outside walking you know what is what is the whole point of this right and when we first started doing these instagram lives when we first started doing these youtube lives about two and a half years ago you know bao and i were not very physically fit we were basically sitting in our offices all day we wouldn't exercise we would just get a bunch of DoorDash and just get fat all day. So we wanted a way to not only escape our office, but we wanted a way to be able to help you guys. So that's where we came up with these walking Instagram lives. This is how we walked away at zombie time to protect our profits. This is how we did a little bit of exercise in the morning. And this is how we started to educate you guys, right? So it's been a while since we've done this. It's been cold out here in New Jersey. I've just been in my office all day. So feels good to be back, feels good to get some exercise, feels good to be in the sun. So I wanna talk about a couple things today, guys. I wanna talk about my trades today on AMC and MITO. And then I wanna kinda of open it up to the audience q and I've had a lot of fun answering your guys' questions. So let's start with number one. So if you go to our Instagram page, instagram.com slash myinvestingclub, you can see that next to my P&L for the day, I made 3,000 today. Next to the P&L on the day, I included the watch list on the day. And basically guys, the watch list is your guide. The watch list is the closest thing that you could get to alerts without pumping stocks. At MIC, we do not pump stocks. We wake up early, we pre-plan our trades, and then we execute our trades based on our plans, right? So today, when I walked in, I saw AMC at like 1550 or something like that. And yesterday it was at like $14. So I said to myself, fuck it, I don't really want to trade this stock today. AMC is a cult stock. It is a Wall Street bet stock. All these people with stimulus checks and all these people with a dollar and a dream, they hold these stocks and they keep buying to it. They keep averaging to a loser. So it is very difficult to bet against these cult stocks, AMC and GameStop long term. Long term, they're gonna go down. Long term, they're gonna go down. But short term, there's gonna be a lot of volatility. So when AMC trapped people yesterday, I told myself, I don't want to trade it today. The market's been kind of choppy. I don't want to trade another choppy stock. I found myself trading AMC for like 30 minutes yesterday, 40 minutes yesterday. And to me, that was really stressful. And I don't want to be stressed when I'm trade. I got enough stress in my life, man. So I try to do the least amount when it comes to trading. So number one, guys, number one is AMC. I was not interested until I saw a signal, right? What is a signal, guys? What is a signal? Every time we talk about confirmation, don't trade until you get a confirmation, don't talk until you get a signal, don't do any of this shit. And my confirmation, my signal on AMC was this morning, pre-market, it dumped from 15 all the way down to like 1420. And when that happens, now longs are stuck, right? All those people that bought saying it's gonna go to 20, it's gonna to go to the moon. It's gonna do the same thing it did last time. All those people are now stuck in underwater. And when that happens, guys, when that happens, if the stock bounces, they just wanna get out at break even. It is common human psychology that if you are down on a position and it bounces back to break even, you wanna get out. So on AMC, pre-market early, I was not interested until I saw the confirmation. I saw a tank right down. I saw a tank. And after it tanked, I made a plan. My plan on it, as I shared to the uh, members in the room, is I'm looking for a bounce towards VWAP, right? I'm looking for a bounce towards VWAP in the morning. And then as it started to tank even lower, it went down to $14. And then when it went down to $14, I adjusted my plan. I said, I am looking for a $14.50 and a $15 rejection. So the way I do that, guys, is I will scale about 10 to 15% of my size at $14.50, and I will scale the other 10 to 15% of my size at $15, guys. So basically, what I do is I make my plan, I set my fantasy orders, and then I basically just wait, okay? So this morning, AMC tanked right out of the open. And oftentimes what happens is when these stocks tank, everyone that wants to short at $14.50, everyone that wants to short at $15, they end up chasing it. They end up getting FOMO. They end up saying, holy shit, I gotta make sure I get in, right? 
And that is the wrong thing to do. That is the wrong thing to do. So I, I want to make sure that when it was tanking, that I guided the members and said, wait, do not short it yet. Do not touch it. Wait for the early short sellers to get squeezed. And when they get squeezed, they are gonna fill our fantasy orders at 1450, okay? So what ended up happening is it tanked down, it bounced to 1450. I had a fantasy order at 1449 and I covered at 1428 and it tanked all the way down to 1360. So I'm a very fast trader, guys. I like to get in and I like to get out. I don't wanna sit there all day. I got more important shit to do. So my entries are always spot on. My exits are really shit. But the point is, is that even though my exits are shit, the members in the room that got the 1450 line mentioned pre-market 30 minutes before the open, they covered at 14, they covered at 1370, they covered at 1360, they beat me, right? They beat me, okay? And that's what the whole point is. So number one, AMC was pre-planned on this morning's watch list. AMC was a trade that was low stress. When it tanked, I, as a mentor, tried to guide the members and say, do not attack it yet. Wait, okay, wait. You know, when you're joining, you're trying to learn from those that have been there before. I have been there before where I miss that trade and I chase it and I get stuck. And the worst thing I could do is get stuck early and then it follows my plan and I cannot execute. So that's why I want to guide the members and that's why I want to tell you guys, just be careful and wait for it. Set your fantasy orders. Ideally, I would have wanted it to go to 15, but it went to 1450, I got my entry and that was it. So that was number one. That was a trade that was pre-planned in the watch list guys. Okay, and that was executed real time, guided real time, and shit, man, every single member seems like nailed that. People are asking where I'm from. I'm from the USA, I'm from New Jersey. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the next trade of the day. M-I-T-O, guys, M-I-T-O. So this was kind of like, I would say like a B setup. And the reason why I would say it's a B setup is because it wasn't really up too much, and I really don't like $1 stocks. $1 stocks, for whatever reason, I just suck at. I just can't do it. Like, like it's like there's a inefficiency in my brain. Anytime I trade a $1 stock, I suck and I lose. So, most of the time, I ignore $1 stocks. Most of the time, I don't want to touch that shit. So, I have to remind myself that I don't need to be trading every single stock on the day. I just need to be trading the stocks that fit my edge, fit my niche, fit my criteria. But regardless, I make a plan for it. Because if I see that there's a potential there, I'm gonna make a plan for it. So what was my plan on MITO? So if you look at the chart pre-market, you can see that around 170 to 175, there was a lot of resistance, pre-market resistance. And I think it topped out at 195 pre-market. So basically my plan was I wanna short that first level of resistance at 170, I want to add at that next level of resistance at $2. And if it breaks over 220, I want to stop out. So this morning, a pump room, a free Discord pump room. Again, guys, if you guys are in any of these pump rooms, if you guys are following any of these furu guru uh, fake mentors, you are going to lose all your money. But it doesn't matter because if you're here watching, you're going to learn how to bet against all these guys. So next thing is these pumpers pump this stock. It was dead. It was at like 140, 150. They pumped the stock up to 170. It literally rejected 170 and went all the way down to 140. So two out of the three stocks in the watch list were both money, were both nail and bail, and you would have made money within the first 30 minutes of trading those stocks, okay? So this is the thing that I don't understand. Everyone is looking for alerts. Everyone is looking for pumps. Everyone is looking to for text message alerts. But the truth of the matter is, I mean, we're providing you with the most legitimate structure for trading. And to be honest, I hate to say it, but if you just follow the watch list, you're probably gonna make a bunch of money. But a lot of people don't care, right? Because they want us to come and click the button. So this makes sense, guys. So again, if you do not believe me or you think I am full of shit, go to Instagram.com slash my investing club and check out the watch list that was posted an hour before and check out my trades that I executed, okay? So that's that. 
Let me kind of go through these questions here. See what the hell you guys are talking about. I'm talking about how to make you guys $3,000 a day and you guys are talking about where's my fucking mask. My mask is up your ass, bro. You see anyone around me? Because I don't. Anyway, so if that all makes sense, guys, I want to open it up to a brief audience Q&A. I want to be able to take your questions and field out your questions. So please post your questions here in the live chat and I will be able to kind of help you and mentor you for free. So let's go over it, guys. <laughs> Those same people asking where my mask are are saying, where's your text message alerts and where's your email alerts? So let's open up to Q&A, guys. What questions do you have? Was AMC not a nail and bail once it ranked, uh, pre once it tanked pre-market? Yes, it was a nail and bail, and that's exactly what I did. I got 1450 to 1428, and it tanked after. A lot of the members, they held longer because once it went red, it was kind of like a first red day, not really, but once it went red, it kind of triggered more selling. And to me, guys, I don't have all day to sit in front of the screens. I don't want to sit in front of the screens all day. I got so much shit I got to do. So to me, I take my easy money and run. Is the watch, is the watch list cost? I mean, once you join MIC, you get it for free. Is that an old MIC shirt? No, this is an MIC Chinese New Year shirt that I'll have made. Would love to see more large cap equity trading in MIC. We have a large cap and options channel. We have a free options basics course. And Joe Kelly has options and large cap webinar every Tuesday at 7 p.m., which is today. So I don't know what more we could do, man. <laughs> My man Davron, bro, I appreciate that, man. Coming from you means a lot, man. When is the next meetup? So this is a very interesting question. Um, so as you guys know, COVID is still happening, yes. Um, and we held a meetup in Miami a couple of months ago. But to be honest, guys, like, I'm kind of fearful for my parents. I don't want to kind of go to a meetup and God forbid something happens and I get my parents and grandparents sick. But, but... But what I think we're going to do is somewhere towards the end of the year, uh, we're going to try to do a meetup at our broker partners uh, headquarters, Cobra Trading. We're going to try to do a meetup at their headquarters in Texas. And I think their headquarters could only fit like 50 or 100 people. So maybe we'll have some sort of smaller uh, type of meetup. So I don't know. We're trying to plan something, guys. But to be honest, like I don't want anyone to get sick. You know, maybe we could have something that says you have to show some sort of uh, negative COVID test before you come or just something like that. At the end of the day, man, it's, it's not for us. You know, some of us are young, but a lot of our parents, a lot of our grandparents are a little bit older. So we just got to make sure that we keep them safe, guys. How do I join MIC? You go to myinvestingclub.com. And again, guys, we were talking about this before, but we have a free webinar that we run for you guys. So basically, this is like your introduction into MIC. We have a free two-hour webinar, guys. It's at myinvestingclub.co.co. So if you're curious about joining, check out our free webinar so you guys can see what we are all about. We haven't really talked about it in a long time, but you guys could check it out. Let's keep going, guys. You guys got me for another five, 10 minutes. What questions do you have? Let me kind of go back through this. Do you know anything about trend reversals between 9.50 and 10.10? I mean, to be honest, guys, the only trend reversal that you need to focus on is the 10.30 zombie rule reversal rule. It is not a surprise that everyone is following that rule now. Got some Asian people, some Arabic people in here. That's sick. When do you stop out? Range of the trade or the line? So there's two things, guys. There's two ways to stop out. One is setting a number. I only want to lose $200 on this trade. 
So you set your stop at where your $200 loss would be. Or you want to set your stop <coughs> where the trade thesis is no longer active. Most of the time, if you are a short seller, that is when high the day breaks. If you are a long trader, that is when low the day breaks. So you want to set your stop where the trade thesis is no longer active. What size do you take when you trade the low hanging fruit? So usually guys, what I like to do is I like to break the low hanging fruit into 50% and 50% size. So I like to give it two lines basically because it's already a broken stock. I could use a little bit more size. So if your max size is a thousand shares, you can do 500 shares and 500 shares. Do you use your biggest size on low hanging fruit like James? I use my biggest size on the trades that provide me with the most edge, which is first red days and sympathy plays. And when I have a sympathy play that is going on the first red day, <laughs> I'm bulldozing in size, man. Man, these allergies suck. <coughs> what is the number one rule that you wish you knew other than zombie when you started? Use hard stops. Use hard market stops. I didn't start using stops until three to four years into my trading because no one taught me that. <coughs> so if I was to go back, if I was to go back and do it again, I would be using hard stops. It took me years and years to learn that because I had no mentor to teach me. Everyone told me that if you use hard stops, the market makers are gonna stop you out and they're gonna find you. Let me tell you something, the market makers don't care about your 1,000 shares. So set your stops, wear your trading seatbelt, and you will be fine. Would the 170 line and two dollar line be two separate trades? <coughs> Jesus, what the hell is happening to me? Um, so I would have scaled in. I would have scaled in at 170, I would have scaled in at two dollars, and I would have stopped out at 220. So technically, I wanted it to go to two dollars so I could get some more size on. SMB and hedge funds don't use hard stops. SMB and hedge funds will not let you trade unless you use hard stops. So I don't know who the hell is telling you all this fake information. Hedge funds and prop firms will not allow you to trade if you do not use hard stops. So much misinformation out there, man. Alex, how come you bought BTC on Cash App? Should have bought Robinhood. I was testing everything. I was testing Cash App. I was testing Venmo. I was testing, uh, testing blockchain. I just wanted to test out all the platforms. But yeah, I did buy some Bitcoin. I bought some Bitcoin at, I think like 43,000 or something like that for a longer term hold. The reason why guys is I want to be able to diversify myself. I, <coughs> I want to be able to have my hands in every single type of the pot. And I think my generation is still investing into the stock market, but I think one generation under is going to start investing in crypto. I think they care more about crypto than they care about stocks. So I just want to have my finger in that just in case it does continue to go higher. And Bitcoin is down like 40% from the highs. So I got no, hold, no problem holding and buying. Yeah, I won the Jake Paul fight. I made $10,000. I put some of that into Bitcoin. Do you use FeeWap that includes pre-market action? Yes, I use both. I use pre-market and uh, I like pre-market and normal market times VWAP. <coughs> Any other questions, guys? Welcome back home. Any other questions, guys? So who wants to come to an MIC car meet? So the next thing I am planning is an MIC car meet, guys. Do you like trading personally more or do you like trading at a prop firm? I like trading for myself more because a prop firm is going to take half your profits. <coughs> so any other questions, guys? Before I walk in.
Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Do your rules work with OTC trades? Yeah, Bao is actually the king of OTC. So a lot of our setups are kind of derived from uh, a lot of OTC plays. Huh. What car do you have? Very interesting. I don't really like to brag. I don't really like to talk about that stuff. I see a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of people bragging for the first time they're able to afford a supercar. For the first time, a lot of these people are able to afford a bunch of stuff. And, you know, I've had a very nice car for a very long time and I don't really care to show it. But it's just sometimes I just want to put these furus in their place and let them know that when they think that they're the kings of the world and they have all this money and all these cars and everything, I mean, where the fuck were you a year ago, you know, before you had chat room? So it is what it is. Maybe we'll do a quick sneak peek and we will end it here. So we will talk later, guys. I'll see you guys back in the room. Later.